Welcome again to the Ignite Conversations year-end special with our Ignite founders. For those of you who are new to Ignite, allow me to provide a brief introduction. Ignite is a family of international events experts and enthusiasts with a passion and desire to make a positive difference in the world. We provide specialized consultancy in combination with active and integrated support of project delivery. We are strong advocates and believers of education, of open dialogue, and of taking action to contribute to positive change. Now, we have launched multiple initiatives, including this Ignites Conversation series, the What Is series, and more. Ignites Conversations was conceived from our intentions to reach out and bolster our community during the initial uncertainties and upheavals of the pandemic. With time on our hands, the opportunity seemed too good to pass up and the opportunities for dialogue and discovering together what we can do for positive change, for enhancing our processes, challenging inefficient methodologies, identifying and breaking down the old biases and assumptions, all while tapping into the minds and the hearts of our leaders, innovators, friends, colleagues in the Olympic, Paralympic and events world. Our first season's main themes address challenges faced, resilience, opportunities for growth and facing ch uh, changes. And this was framed in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and was meant as a reminder to our audience who were struggling with uncertainty that we are not in fact helpless, but that we are empowered and that while recognizing and accepting the reality we face, we could foster hope in moving forward. Our second season addressed the fascinating topic of accessibility, inspiration, and empowerment. And now I think it's a, it's a little lonely here. I'd like to invite our four co-founders to join, uh, sorry, our three other co-founders to join me. Hello, Gus. Hello, Nyo. Hello, there, Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, <laughs> Well, it's good to see all of you, even though we are far, far apart from each other, and Neo being the furthest out in Southeast Asia. 2020, huh? What a year it's been. I can't, I actually can't believe it's already December. Now, the end of year is time that many of us spend in reflection and also in planning ahead and preparing to take on the challenges of the new year. It's a time for contemplation and hope. And so I think it would be really wonderful to go on a conversational journey from 2020 to 2021 with my dear friends and co-founders, Ilva, Neo and Gustavo. So again, 2020 has been this year of upheaval, great shaking up of everything that's normal and what has previously given us stability and certainty. We've been faced with the cancellation of events, the cancellation of work. And for those of us who were trying to travel home in the middle of pandemic, the eerie, the absolute eerie silence in airports as we navigated cancelled flight after cancelled flight after cancelled flight, trying to get home. And then, of course, beyond that, the many things we've taken for granted um, and the challenges uh, that we faced and the things that we take for granted that were sometimes lost. For example, being able to see people smile because we're all wearing masks or being able to visit our friends and families and loved ones easily. And with the growing pandemic, we heard from colleagues and friends about their anxiety, their fear, the uncertainty and loss that they were surrounded and inundated by. And as I mentioned earlier, so we started Ignite's conversations as a way of maintaining our connection with our community, but also with the voice of leaders and innovators and um, and, and colleagues, friends, family who work in this field together with us. Actually, I'd like to hand over to you, Neil, on this point because, and I think Gustavo and Ilva will agree with me that you are our North Star, so to speak, on our online and our many initiatives. <laughs> Where are you now, Neil? Please share with our audience. And because during this time last year, we were together here in Europe waiting for Ilva and Gustavo to join us on our very first Ignite's co-founders meeting. And at that time, you and I were discussing our very second Ignite's project. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's been a year, right? I mean, who would imagine the year had passed so fast and so many things, well, different things had happened, not plan things, but I think we we all had to kind of pivot and, and change our lifestyle. Um, uh, for me, I've been home in Malaysia with my parents 
um, for the past, let's see, since March, and I was lucky because because you mentioned that that we had problems to travel and everything. I was really lucky because my my parents was when they heard about the quarantine happening, when they heard about the spread of the pandemic happening, they said, "Okay, come home, come home, faster, buy a ticket and and come home." And so it was really lucky because I arrived two days prior to Malaysia completely shutting down, My and God. and um. And really, I, I I I was really lucky to to beat that shutdown border and and continue uh, to do work from home, um, so to say. Uh, but yes, to to come back to to what you were mentioning about our second project, we were actually talking about Boxing Road to Tokyo, which is going to be resumed in April next year from the European uh, qualifiers and. They also had to kind of stop midway because of the pandemic. So it was really an unpre another unprecedented uh, event that happened where competition is stopped right in the middle and then it's going to be resumed um, <laughs> one year later, right? <laughs> um, so that was a bit that was a bit crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you said that I'm the Nofta. Honestly, I couldn't keep myself uh, stagnant. And and as you know, I, I I like to keep moving and moving and moving. So to keep my brain moving, to keep myself thinking, to keep myself um, not bored because of the hectic travel of my career the past few years where I had you know especially in twenty nineteen, um, I traveled from one country to another country a lot, and then suddenly this year is completely stopped. So um, I I think being at home during this time. Uh, I kind of uh, bugged all of you <laughs> with my <laughs> idea, <laughs> and and we had a lot of discussions about about how we can bring ignite uh, to the face of the public because we also just established ignite at that time. We officially established in in March, and March was the time that COVID hit. And although we had, of course, other plans like. Um, you know, doing operations on site, uh, supporting different events uh, in 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 other countries. We couldn't do all that because COVID completely shut the entire world down, and and that's why we came up with the Ignite's conversation, which was good because we started with the postponement of Tokyo, which was very. I think it was a very interesting topic for everybody. And again, it's an unprecedented event that happened in the events world. To postpone one year the or the Olympic Games is something that the organizing committee, the International Olympic Committee, had had never done before. So it was a real nice start to our online initiatives. And then, of course, we had the Ignite um, presents, Ignite introduces, and of course, with our partner Wisti, we conducted several online uh, demos to showcase what a great system that they have. A system that we advocate, uh, we would like the organizing committee to have that kind of system because it really empowers the users. So we wanted our other stakeholders, the people that we know within our sports industry and the sports network, to also see what we can see in in their system. Um, and then, of course, we went on with the COVID. We also tried to engage all our different igniters, and and I'm sure all of us can agree, igniters are the core of Ignites. They are the beating heart of why we are doing this company. And so we reached out to all of them and we said, hey, look, can you give us some thoughts on how you are feeling during this COVID time? And therefore, Ignites Reflections came about where we had every week one or two uh, Ignites Reflections on, on how our Igniters were feeling, on their thoughts uh, about maybe future improvements to when COVID had gone. Um, so that was Ignite's Reflections. And then we had the Ignite's What Is series. I think both you and I love that series because it's something that we talk very strongly about, about education, about making making knowledge and experience more accessible. And, and What Is was amazing. And of course, before, before What Is, I forgot to say that we had that amazing Ignite showcases, which I think was was great because we touched um, the hearts of people. We 
got to know our igniters and also the network of people, uh, our family, um, better due to their history, due to their background? How did they come about to working in the events industry? Um, what made them change their mind from maybe working in a very steady job to something which is very uh, not so steady, not so stable in terms of financial and everything. So we really got to know them. And it was really nice to also give that spark of hope to people who were listening and, and who were wanting to come into the events industry that, that told them saying that don't give up hope, persevere. Even if you're in a different industry right now and you really love sport, you can still come into the sports and events industry just by having that, that, that persistence and that determination that you have in, in your life. So you can do it. So I think Ignite showcases, Ignite what is. And then, of course, um, we also in September had the Ignite Academy. Well, not Ignite Academy at that time. And this one we will touch upon later. But we had a collaboration with the UPM Sports Academy uh, to fulfill our dream of making education and knowledge more accessible. And where you and I co-hosted, I think it was an event which was very humbling to us. I believe you can, you can concur on that um our speakers were were so open they were so willing to transfer their information to share their knowledge and experience that that the participants in our ignites um and upm sports academy who was our collaborators um the participants were so were so engaged <laughs> i we, we definitely went on more time like half an hour to one hour every day but cool i mean but really fantastic engagement from the participants they stayed from the very beginning right to to the to the very end so that was uh that was something which was amazing really really good but okay okay i think i've, I've spoken a lot you know, now <laughs> i'm gonna pass it to to gustavo so <laughs> so, so Gus, i i think i i speak too much and we have spoken every day i think nearly every day we have spoken <laughs> each other during this year um how have you been? And and I know that you are now right now in Lisbon. How has that uh, affected your 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 work with the ANOC as well? Let us know. Yeah, it was certainly a big change. I mean, travel was part of my almost weekly routine. I was going to Switzerland almost every week, and so that stopped, and th that gave me the opportunity to 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 be to be at home more with my family. And I think 2020 was a year of reflection for for, for everybody, right? Uh, I mean, Ming mentioned in the beginning that usually the end of the year is when people start to think about the next year and everything. But I think 2020 in general was a year of reflection, but not only about uh, what's going to happen next year, but what's going to happen with, with everything in mean, all different aspects of our lives. I mean. There were so many things going on uh, around us. Everybody was stuck at home at some point and so the world was getting a bit crazy, you know, with discussions about do we save the economy or do we save the people? You, know, you were talking about people's lives here and it's, uh, it's such a deep discussion that was surrounding our daily reality. That was very heavily emotionally for everybody. And so that was part of our lives and we all had to, at some point, learn how to deal with it and refocus on our uh, activities and okay let's go back let's focus and uh, our work is a big mess right now how can we uh, take any benefit out of this and see how we can take the positives and s prepare ourselves for the coming future uh so there are uh, there are some questions that i i would like to mention that for me were really heavy i mean the u.s elections this year were like really crazy with all of those, oh my God, I have to say, uh, Trump is like something special. But all, how the world with QAnon and all of those uh, theories of, uh, I don't know, and, and the world actually believing in, into it and fighting for things that are not sustained and like, oh, the world is going crazy. What can we do? And at some point, I think that everybody has a part in it. And we have to be there and we have to express ourselves and fight for what we believe. And so, as you can see, 2020 was a year of very big reflection for me. But it was also a year that without that many travel and 
as during the first impact of uh, staying at home, we had more time, you know, for as business were trying to settle in and decide what to do. Uh, I was able to connect more with people. So as Neil said, we were in touch almost every day and we were able to discuss and to understand more of what all the, uh, uh, of the potential that uh, Ignite has for the future and uh, everything that was done this year was incredible. Perhaps even without the pandemic, that would not be possible uh, with us being more engaged into all of these other things that were supposed to happen in 2020. But just to finish, I think it was also a year for us to value our, also uh, our private lives, being with our family and joy. I have a small kid which grows every day and do something new every day. And so I was very grateful to be here every day and be able to witness that more. So when you're traveling, sometimes that's not possible. So I was able to enjoy that very much. And I'm thankful for 2020 for giving me that. But now uh, let's focus on 2020 and uh, 2021 and see what, how, what the effect of the vaccine will be, but also how we can help uh, improve the sports world and focus on Ignite's mission and vision and support our Igniters, bring this community even closer together and you know get some more projects and get these people to work and be together in person and start uh, our little baby steps on improving the sports world. Yeah. But as I spoke with family, I think it's a good time to ask how 2020 was for Ilva, which was definitely a very special year for her. Yes. Um, this year, already from the beginning, actually already from the end of last year, this year was supposed to be very special for our family as uh, our um, firstborn was uh, born in August. And, uh, and I think when since a moment when we found out that we will have this continuation of our family is coming, then it, it all, uh, already makes you reflect on your life, uh, reflect on values, reflect up on your lifestyle, on your everyday life, on the decisions you do, on the actions you make, on your health, on, I mean, on everything. And, uh, and then, Already while being pregnant, I was thinking a lot about it. Uh, even when Anna was born, actually now she's luckily she's allowing me to be part of this uh, talk and peacefully sleeping because I never know, you know, what will happen. <laughs> but um, no, it was. Uh, but uh, having a baby, I feel like I'm in my own bubble, living. And as Sugu said, you know about. The, elections and everything for me about this new change that came in my life i feel like I, i'm in my own bubble and learning more about i don't know babies and all what is connected to children and that i haven't been so much involved from the professional side of my life uh and i'm so thankful to all three of you allowing me to do it as well and that you all you are so engaged and so active and I hope an Anna is uh, big enough, not big enough, a bit bigger, then I can be again so involved uh, way more. Uh, so this year has been already with uh, Anna arriving, then the pandemics, it actually, from one side, it was good for our family because we, we could be even more together as for Goose as well. And uh, because uh, in our family, we live in two different countries so it, it we were more together um i think the hardest part in this year was not to be able to meet all all of you all our friends because i think we all are used to travel and now we were more at home yes we are more families but still for me the people are important because i believe that we all i mean are the people who are in our lives are there for a reason not like simply like that and and it's a pity that we couldn't meet like personally and i hope that uh, all of you will meet anna personally soon as well uh, yes. i think for for ignite yes uh, as you all said i think it, it this year was a beginning but because of all things that happened it allowed us to shape ignites in a different way i think than we expected 
I think we expected it to be more like being in events and giving opportunities for our igniters, but at the end, we were more online and uh, more uh, showcasing ignites, igniters, like I think totally, totally differently than we expected it to be. But I think in a good way. I think really, really in a good way. So this has been uh, my year. And I think, Ming, you have had a, an interesting year as well, no? <laughs> I did have an interesting year. And exactly as all of you have been saying, it's it really, everything that has happened this year has really, really does make you think about life. Um, when I arrived home into home, yeah, well, home, actually home, this is second home here in Norway, um, into the lockdown because lockdown had already, well, I think a lot of the rules for, um, for, for staying at home had already come into place by the time I reached Norway. So everything was very strange and it was incredibly stark how, in terms of, as a reminder, how fortunate I am to, to be able to be safe at home, to actually not have to worry so much that I, in the way that I know many people became incredibly concerned um, as a result of the pandemic, because they, on the one hand, yes, being at home is lovely, but on the other hand, all the, all the problems associated with that, you know, not being able to go to work, not being able to put food on the table, all of these questions came up. But for me uh, personally, Meanwhile, my medical colleagues were out on the front lines and they were working with very little information and with the growing fear surrounding lack of materials, um, lack of support and the reality of our mortality as human beings staring them in their faces as, you know, in some cases, for some of them, patient after patient perished in front of them. And in some cases, some of their colleagues were falling ill. And for some of them, they were falling ill. And of course, not only our medical colleagues, but everyone else who were still continuing with work um, because they had to, because society still needed to function in some shape or another. And it, it filled me with an immense amount of guilt. You know, the, the thoughts of, I should be out there with my colleagues serving. I should not have come home. Those kinds of thoughts, I should not have come home. Thoughts of, I need to upgrade my skills so that I can serve, so that I can serve better. I need to be better. And subsequently having to accept eventually that most things were out of my hands, which actually, thank goodness, most things are out of my hands. Um, and so then to take a deep breath and to take what action one can take, but ultimately to take action. And I think that brings me to an interesting and very pertinent aspect of 2020, which is all of the learnings we have had in the year. So not only the, the reflections and not only its impacts on our, on our lives, but what are the actual learnings that we have had? So in March, I was, um, in March, I was teaching in the United States and before my second course was canceled, almost like Neo's family who called you to come home, come home. My uh, lead instructor, uh, because he's much more realistic than I am, <laughs> anticipated this massive global ramifications and told me, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't finish teaching with me, but you need to start looking at your options to get home because we don't know if you're going to be able to get home. And so he said, make contingency plans, make plans, make contingency plans. What if you can't get home? What would you do? Who do you need to call? Now, for those of us in the events world, this is starting to sound familiar because it's all about contingency planning. It's all about anticipation of what might or might not happen. And I think in the words of a very dear friend, um, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance which is a universally applicable concept for life near that seven piece. <laughs> it's a universal, universally applicable concept for, for life and for work, you know, sport events. Do you have a rainy day plan? Um, do you have a bad weather plan? I mean, maybe it's a winter event. It could be rainy, but it might just be a horrible weather. What if your workforce gets sick? What if your systems fail? And this is something we talk about quite a lot in Ignites. What if your systems fail? Have you empowered your team enough so that they understand the principles and the fundamentals and can take action if, even if all they had was pen and paper? 
<laughs> which would be, oh my gosh, but if they have the fundamentals, if they have the principles, if you've empowered them, they can take action. So in anticipation, in planning for the future, some of us, I think, during this year looked at upskilling. And I learned especially how much intentionality one needs to put in our outreach to, to our friends and our family and to our colleagues and, and everyone, really, when you can when our usual interactions, our usual modes of interactions are no longer possible, when you can no longer see the faces of your students because they're wearing masks and you don't know if their their eyes have rolled into the back of their heads because they're so bored with what you're saying, mm -hmm. or they can't really see the smile on your face if you're trying to tell a joke. And I, I think I'm reasonably funny uh, <laughs> in my own way. <laughs> uh, but with with a mask covering my expressions, it can be hard to, to gauge what's going on and, and people don't laugh. Um, so yes, while people are quick message away, we have to make time. We have to invest in how we interact. That quality of interaction becomes key. And I think this resonates very directly with what you said, Ilva, when you spoke about you know, the the changes that are happening, actually all of you have mentioned this, opportunities for change, the ways we can do things very differently. Um, we appreciate stability, but, and I'm going to throw this question to you, Ilva. What if, but because, and, and in your case, nothing is the same again, but what if nothing is the same again? <laughs> it's actually, um, I think about it a lot. Because uh, now, when being um, uh, home and being a full time mom, it uh, I always have this thought that when I think, oh, how it was before, you know, when I when uh, I was married or when I, I didn't had a baby, you know, how, how we lived in Lillehammer or in Austria or in Innsbruck, and and uh, but I know that I mean that has passed, and now something new, and that's what I have to learn to live in this moment. And uh, so many people have said, like, enjoy being at home with the baby. Enjoy every moment. Although sometimes I really have some evenings when Anna is crying. I think I think it's easier to organize the Olympics than to be with her, you know, <laughs> and just having her crying and trying to calm her down. And oh, it was so much easier, you know, <laughs> before <laughs> sometimes, I think. But... Um, I think the learning is to to accept the phase in your life where where you are now, and for me, where uh, I am now, to accept that I'm now. I uh, I mean, that's how God God has created in the world, right? That the, it's a woman who gives the birth and is at home with the baby. I mean, most of the cases, uh, and very often I have thought, oh, why my husband cannot put her in the bed? You know, why he cannot feed her? I mean. Uh, it, it would be so much easier for me, but now I'm 24 seven mom and uh, she depends on me so much and I have to accept it and I have to to enjoy actually this moment and then know oh, this this will pass and and then a, a new area, not new phase in my life will start and and it's all the time changing every time is changing so i think for this year what i'm learning is to accept where i am now not maybe sometimes to push too hard on myself i mean sometimes i think we should push more harder on ourselves i think especially on being physically active but maybe i think is doing very good while he's at home but some things, you know, not to put too high expectations on yourself, especially with the baby. I have learned, okay, if I'm not doing something today, I can still do it tomorrow or day after tomorrow. <laughs> and I think that was has been uh, learning for me this year, especially in my personal life. And from actually from a professional life, I what this new experience was. I think for all of us to lead a live talks online. I mean, with writers and uh, with what if series. I think that was what I learned this year from a professional po point of view. Um, yeah, I think that was what I learned this this year. So, Neo, you are our world traveler. I mean, I think now being at home, you are, you are already mentioned in the first part. But so, what have you learned? Practical. I, mean, I know that you have learned so many new practical things. But uh, so, tell us. <laughs> 
Well, I, actually, I learned a lot, but I just wanted to comment on, on what Ming had mentioned before with regards to connection, especially we uh, us trying to find that, that physical connection or, you know, wearing a mask, which means that you don't really see the expression. And, and I think that was one of the things that triggered um, Ming and, and us to, to come up with that Ignite Connect session that we had last, this year as well where we brought all our igniters together to get to know and and also ming having a back a, a strong background in terms of um uh, providing providing guidance uh in to to help us mentally because it was a really mentally challenging year this year as well so so one of the things that we did which was really good and i think it, we, we will be doing it soon uh in a different scale um this year but um but yeah, coming back to, to learnings, uh, yes, Ilva, I have been physically active every day. Can you imagine? <laughs> because I have so much more time on my hands right now. Oh my God, I can imagine that like, I have a lot of time. You know, I've been sleeping so much more as well. So learning to sleep, learning to learning to have more time. <laughs> and um, and I think the biggest learning for me this year is is to focus on the things that I can control. Um, it was no use for me to think about things that I cannot control. For example, when can I travel again? Or when is the borders going to be open to, to go to Switzerland, for example? Or should I have a family holiday? Because that's something which in my family, we go for a family holiday every year, every year. So this year we, we couldn't do that. So my biggest learning was to, to focus on the things that I can control, meaning I can control my space. I can control my physical health. I can control um, Ignite. And that's why I was trying to control it a lot because we took this opportunity. We took this opportunity. Okay. I, I'm not hoarding ignites, but <laughs> I think I have been been pushing you guys a lot, and that's something that I can control. And so my focus on on having to be able to control the things that that are in front of me help me focus, help me stir my day to day, which was so different from my day to day previously. Um, I could, you know, previously I could wake up in a different country. Uh, in a different day because I was traveling so much, but now I have uh, 10 steps to my desk, two steps to my cafe, and five steps to my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so all this I, I could control. Um, and it was also a good, <clears throat> it was a good chance for me to take a step back, focus on my family, Reacclimatize myself with my parents who I have not lived together for the past 10 years. So we, we also learn how to live with each other, cohabit with your parents again. Um, <laughs> enjoying enjoying the, the food that is in Malaysia, you know, it's something that I can control. If I want to eat my, my takwetel or my chicken rice, I can I can oh. go and buy it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that was my, my, my biggest learning this year. And, and you know, um, for me, uh, that focus was very much help with regards to Ignites with your help, with you guys' help. Because without the four of you, um, I, I don't think I would have been able to move forward so fast. That's that's where our teamwork comes a, a lot. And that's something that we control. And we took this opportunity in, in 2020 to make sure that, that Ignite gets recognized on social media because we can control the social media. <laughs> we can control whatever we bring up, right, Gus? So, <laughs> so Gus, what have you learned apart from making that patio on your garden? I know in your house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to say building a deck in my garden was a very relaxing and mind calming activity. <laughs> but it, once it was finished, you know, I think one of the biggest learnings for me in 2020, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a junior professional anymore. I have already uh, some experience, but still, being humble and, and accepting uh, 
to be able to uh, accept losses and accepting that you you're not going to be able to achieve all that you wanted and and especially this year was something that i had to revalidate that's something that i already took throughout the years in in my career but this year especially i had to accept losses and, and, and defeat and frustrations so it was a way of always trying to refocus and reprogramming but also thinking that as barbara said there's always opportunity within challenges and, and obstacles so uh, that's something that we must always keep in mind and not let yourself be guided by the frustration because frustration is something very powerful and it can easily suck you in but then you have to refocus on the values uh, of your uh, that surrounds you and the positive things and also what you can still achieve despite all the obstacles that will come ahead of us uh, every day you know there's always something that we can still do even on end steps little by little something that we can achieve uh, every day so i think that was uh, one of my biggest learnings for 2020 i'm a thinker i think a lot my wife really gets bugged about this because i'm always with my head somewhere i said oh come back what are you doing i say, oh okay i'm, I'm back i'm back <laughs> but that's, that's part of who i am I, I i'm always thinking and especially this year that we're you know enclosed in our home uh, limited connection to people i did a lot of thinking but uh, i i end the year uh happy with everything that uh, we have achieved professionally with a lot of big nights but also personally and despite the uncertainties of how the vaccine is going to go how tokyo is going to go when the sports uh, events is really going to come back in full uh, we don't know all that but i mean it's still a, a good year and for me personally and I'm, I'm ready to to face the challenges and when the events do open we're ready to tackle it and you know, deliver what we really hope we can, and we know we can. And about uh, passion topics, I mean, I think that uh, for the future, challenging yourselves always is something that we need to keep in mind. Uh, uh, I think uh, that becomes more important when you have so many uh, obstacles in front of you, like everybody in all the industries had in 2020 so refocusing and challenging yourself to do things differently and do more is something that is always good there obviously you're going to fall probably you're going to fall most of the times but i guess it's just part of the learning and creating the self-motivation resetting your goals are something important and uh, something that sometimes we ended up forgetting and put a little bit aside so it's always important to recenter and refocus and bring it back up and so not being afraid of uh, reshuffling the plan for the future things change and things will change forever things will always change and we have to be prepared for that right uh, I think Ilva with the Anna uh, your your life suffered like a huge change but it's a beautiful change but also on the professional life it brings challenges right and you're probably thinking how this comeback is gonna go exactly Exactly, it's what I think a lot, especially when I feel that um, that uh, that um, I know that I'm not. But I mean, because because as you said, you think a lot. I, I think quite a lot as well. And then and then it's like, what if I miss something? I mean, what if I miss out on? I mean, professionally, what yeah. if I miss out on some opportunity? What if I miss out on a project who would actually would have been? I don't know, who would have taught me more or would have led me somewhere else and and uh, but every time i mean i still time to time think about it but then i try to stop myself and no this is a moment in my life and i, I believe things happen for a reason especially with naomi say for good people always good things happen i mean uh, i know this is a time i'm i'm here with anna and 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 that's it I mean, I will have new opportunities, new things will come, but but still, because these thoughts do come, then I have to always stop, like, no, now I'm enjoying this moment. But uh, I think uh, my learning, uh, well, the passion, I, because um, I have been quite social, uh, and 
and I like, you know, be with people. And I think that's uh, my passion is the people. And even like when uh, my husband comes back back from home, I was like, yeah, I, I talked today, you know, uh, I don't know, with Mingus and uh, Neo. Then I talked to my grandma and I talked to your mom. So he's like, oh my God, you're like a bubbling stream all the time. You know, you have to <laughs> That's what I like with Ignite as well. That uh, that I think as uh, from who mentioned it, that that um, we are there for igniters. And as Neo said, they are the I even wrote down the beating heart, and uh, you know that uh, and that's what I love about Ignite. That uh, we are for the people. You know that we 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 want to help them. I mean, yes, we we want to to. Um, to put our knowledge in in the field and 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 improve the sport event world, but but we we we, uh, we want to be with people and we want to help igniters. We want to motivate them to give new opportunities and uh, to get to know them, support them, mentor them, and and uh, that's actually what I like about ignites is the people and the connections that we have that we can make use of them. And uh, and that we can, with our lives, our decisions, we can help them and uh, support them. I think that's what is uh, my passion, especially for the Ignites. And I think, yeah. Uh, but uh, because actually me and Ming, we both have in uh, in Olympics, we all always have worked in the international relations department. So our professional lives have been always about the people, being in the connection with the people, helping the people, supporting mm -hmm. them, solving their issues. So it has always been about talking and chatting and just people, I mean, right? It it has, and, and, and very ironic for me because I it doesn't, you wouldn't believe it, but I think I started off really shy and I had to sit down with a notebook and write down the lines from uh, from my boss on you know what she said to people oh, okay you can actually say this to a person oh you can actually talk about the weather so I write down talking points and and things that one can say to other people so it never came naturally to me but um, it ended up being a passion I actually want to point out uh, I wanted to address something that Goose mentioned about falling that we will possibly fall very often and in most cases um, one of my coaches in, in 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 skating actually once said to me because i got very very blue because i kept falling and he said to me then you you need to realize that falling is equals to leveling up and that completely changed everything for me you've pushed you've pushed all the edges of 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 what you can do, which is why you fell, but now you know where those edges are. So you are leveling up. You are starting to understand the boundaries of what you can and you can't do, what succeeds, what doesn't succeed. And also, we talk very optimistically about lots of things, but of course, some of our challenges are magnified during these times. So some things are actually worse during these times. But then, as you all said, being able to accept it is, is is, is a very powerful um, skill to have. Uh, wild optimism, on the other hand, is not necessarily the best thing to, to have. But yes, um, Ilva, you touched on a point that I'm very passionate about, which is connection. And I've said this on several occasions before, that our ability to connect with each other, and, and this is not just from me, much greater minds have spoken about this, our ability to connect with each other is a huge and important part of our resilience to unexpected events, to upheavals, to stressors. And that's something very important. And all of you have touched on our igniters being the beating heart of, of ignites. Our collective communities can be bolstered, can be brought together in dialogue, in hope, in action. And this is at all times, not only during, not only as we have done this year in 2020. And we should not let the pandemic be our only driving force for these kinds of connections. I think it's very, very important. And in in that way, it's why I'm so proud to be a part of Ignites. Ignites is, as you all said, our people with everything that we bring, our history, our struggles, our triumphs, our passions, our interests, our hopes, our families, and also our quirks. And 
I'm grateful, as Nina said, to be a part of a community that's quick to celebrate each other, to appreciate each other and to lift each other up and empower each other and promote growth that is not only within Ignites, but beyond us, beyond the boundaries of Ignites. It's not just for us, it's for everyone else. And if that promotes growth and that promotes positive change, all the better. So during these times and after, I think I like to ask the question of what we're doing to contribute to our communities. And I don't just mean within the Ignites communities, I mean our communities at large for each of us. You know, for example, during the pandemic, some questions that we could have asked ourselves are, do we have neighbors who are in the at-risk category that we could have helped or that we can be helping now? Do you, are you doing the grocery runs for maybe hospital personnel? Are we going beyond social responsibility? Um, how are we building safety? How are we creating calm? How are we contributing to collective and self-efficacy? How are we creating connection? And how are we creating hope? Just like that, I've touched on all five points of psychological first aid. And I can see smiling <laughs> at me because I keep talking about this. I think she's I think you, you all are sick of hearing me to say this. But so important. I think this is where, enough of me, education comes into the picture for Ignite's new. Education is a big passion of yours, I know this. Can you share about your endeavors? Because I know you have done many things this year to do with education, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Actually, wait, before you start, you say that you have lots of time. I don't believe you. I don't, know, I don't understand how you have time for anything with all that you do. Okay. I'm done because, with I have to say, because my office is just 10 steps away, my cafe <laughs> is two steps away, and my kitchen is just, you know, like five steps away, it saves me so much time. So if you accumulate all that, I have a lot of time on my hands. You know, I don't <laughs> waste time commuting to the office, coming back, you know, that takes a lot of time. So that's where I have all the time. But, um, but uh, yes, talking about passion topics, all of us have mentioned that that passion topic is is for us uh, collectively is ignites, and I think one of the strong points that bind at least the four of us co-founders and why we we all can have that same like you know that that same <laughs> level of thinking, same level of commitment, same level of passion is because we are also good friends and we trust each other. And because we have worked so much with each other, we know that if one of us falls, the three, the other three will pick us up. And that, that is so, Im so important to, to us, that loyalty, that trustworthiness, um, that honesty that we, we can always share with each other. So that's I think that's also something which is very, very relevant to how Ignites is being run, how, it, how we want to make changes to the, to the industry. Uh, and how how we want to create create um, that impact, and education is definitely one of that. And I know we will also be talking a lot. I mean, I also spoke about it earlier with our SEM course. We are also ad having other education um, initiatives. But on a more personal uh, topic, on a more personal passion project, since I'm back in Malaysia. Um, I have always been part of the sports community back here when I'm at home in Malaysia. So the, the, the past 10 years that I have not been here, um, I have kept on and off with the sports community in Malaysia. And since I have so much time on my hands right now, and since that I have uh, discovered the amazing platform of StreamYard, um, what we did in Malaysia, uh, together with my my very close friends from the National Olympic Academy, like Nora Sila, Tanya, Nicholas Chan, Nazrov, we got together and we organized uh, online webinars to help Malaysians um, see the positive power of sport, of Olympism. So Olympism is definitely something which which has guided me in my life. If uh, Olympism is not just about uh, Olympics or, or, or winning, but it is a, it's a way of life. It, it is how you carry yourself, how, how you reach for, for excellence, for 
friendship and respect, which is at the three values of the Olympics, as we know, with the Youth Olympic Games as well. And also with the, the motto of the Olympic Games, which is Cities, Eltius, Fortius, higher, stronger, and faster. How do you how do you implement those three values in, in your life? And that's something that we in, in Malaysia, with with my my colleagues here, um, we actually started that webinar during COVID, and then we started a second webinar series with regards to how actually Olympism can be a, a way of life in terms of uh, education, in terms of health, in terms of dieting, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, mental health as well. So we had that webinar, and I'm so happy to to say that we are now officially registered as a society. So we are the Malaysian Olympism in Action Society, and we are going to kick off amazing projects next year. Uh, we are also trying to, to, to collaborate with international organizations with some of our igniters as well. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that network of sport is, is so strong. And, and I personally, why it's su such a passion project for me is because I want to give back to Malaysia. I love Malaysia. We have such a great uh, united uh, harmonious country. Uh, which unfortunately now the all the, the the politics is chaos but uh, because sport is so strong and the power of sport is is so relevant to bringing us uh, I mean you can I think you can relate to me Ming, because we come from countries which has so many different races and, and religions you know in Malaysia and Singapore Chinese Malay and 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 sport is the united uniting factor and so so that's one of one of the education projects which i hope one day we will be able to connect back with ignite so that we can run something for the society for the community to, to really advocate um physical mental social um learnings and positive uh, values uh, because sport is all of that sport is all of what we had we had mentioned so and, and sport is what brought us all together as well isn't it if it was not for sport, we wouldn't even be starting at night. So I, I really, I've really been blessed with, with sport and, and, and I wanted to give back to, to Malaysia something, even a small drop in the sea. <laughs> um, and, and talking about education, Ming, um, I know that uh, both you and I are now preparing for the next sport event management course, part two. Um, and it is, it is also something that triggered from the fact that when we were working in an organizing committee and when we were moving from one organizing committee to another organizing committee, there was always this gap in knowledge. Somehow there was not that transference of information from one to another. And in a way, that was also very pertinent to the foundation of ignites right so maybe maybe let's share with them what what we have uh, about education and what your passion and i'm sure we all share that passion about education about yeah um before i begin on that point just because you threw out the olympic values i'm going to throw out the paralympic values of courage determination inspiration and equality yes yes um, and especially since our previous conversation seasons, the second season at least, uh, was dealing with the topics of inspiration, of accessibility. So I think that's worth mentioning and reminding us about. But way to way to step beyond social responsibility, you new know, and and work and to bolster your community. I think that's a really powerful thing, and 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 that's the whole thing about taking action as well. Uh, to talk to the point you mentioned on education, so and 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 this is probably obvious when when I say it out loud that education is not only a two way street. We have this concept that education is one in which knowledge is transferred to the student. However, I think every educator will share that being an educator is probably the most phenomenal way to be involved in lifelong learning. Now, once you begin, you can go down a road without any end, which is phenomenally exciting in its own right, and which I think is a huge part of the sport event management course that we uh, that we hosted with UPM this year. And we actually had event professionals join us because they were interested in learning about other aspects of event organization and how that feeds into their own fields, whether or not they are interested in stepping 
away from their fields into something different, or whether they want to use that knowledge to enhance what they are already doing. And I think that's a very powerful thing. So you know, education, as you mentioned, is one of our pillars in Ignite and our shared passion. It's a very fundamental aspect of empowerment, which is why it means so much to us. And then, of course, the transference of skill and knowledge is only one part of it to ensure that it is retained, um, ensure that uh, those who are learning are challenged and are allowed to make mistakes as a part of their growth is also a part of that education process. But these are, of course, not always available in the working environment um, once we step into it. And many of us jumped into the sports events world or the Olympics and Paralympics uh, without having worked in it before, without having been exposed to it before. So then that makes it incredibly challenging. You've never been you've never been given a chance to experiment or try or make mistakes or discuss or workshop things. Um, so then I guess also there's the point where the question of access to knowledge is not the only problem, but the access to mentors. And then, so, as I mentioned, the environment to learn, but also on a practical and experiential front. So not only the academic side, because the academic, the practical, the experiential, all of these work together. They are, in, they are integrated to, to creating, to, to our learning effectively. And, and, and that's pretty much why we've been trying to make knowledge accessible through our initiatives with, um, with sport event professionals who have done this before um, and can speak from their experience and can share those tips and tricks and insights. So on the one hand, it's the idealistic vision of what we are trying to achieve and what we are learning. But on the other side, this is what happens during events. And this is what can happen during events. This is what you need to plan for. This is what you, you should, in order to succeed, do from your foundation. And on the point of education, education is also an aspect of the UN model of sustainability and sustainability is a hugely complex field. Now, if I were to take only one aspect of sustainability, and we have spoken about sustainability uh, during one of our Ignite's What Is series, we, we touched on it with Ian, we touched on it also in the uh, Sport Event Management course, um, the whole sustainability model. But the UN model for sustainability extends to considered quality education, it includes question, quest, to question about um, of, of poverty, um, equality, inclusion, healthcare, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, as well as the environment. But if we were to look at one of these examples, say, for example, that of the changing climate, and we know that this is changing global health, pollutants in the air are contributing to childhood onset of illnesses. So childhood onset asthma, for example, pulmonary disease can also be uh, a condition that comes up as a result of these pollutants and you know, change in temperatures. Heat, for example, could also contribute to cardiovascular disease. This is changing the future of our children. This is changing their long-term quality of life. And this is incredibly serious. And in some places, the increasing temperatures, just as an example, because increasing temperatures is not the only problem, but increasing temperatures are influencing the medications that can be given to some patients because some medications can affect the patient's fluid management, for example. It's completely crazy. Everything is linked there. So it behooves us to take action and make sustainability a part of our commitments in our events, not just the environment piece, which I talked about, but all the other aspects of it as well. And, and, and I could go on for hours, but I know, Gustavo, that sustainability is also a big part of uh, your passions. What are your thoughts on that? So, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so oh, well, stop me talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, the all the thinking that we were all um, able to do the, the, this past year, sustainability is something that us as sports professionals, we need to always take into consideration. We cannot run events like we have done uh, throughout the past years. Uh, it is something that uh, this year we were able to engage a bit more uh, on the planning and the discussions for the Anok World Beach Games together with our igniter, uh, Andres, who is even uh, joining us today. Uh, it, it is clear that this is something that it is 
going to define the future of humanity and how the future generation, how our children are going to live in, in, in our worlds. And that's not something that we have can only be discussing. I mean, this has been discussed for ages and we are already late to take action. So us from the sports uh, community, we cannot be left aside. So we do have a huge responsibility, not only because the, on, on the way we plan our events and the way we execute, there always has to be the sustainability factor uh, guiding our decisions. Of course, the, the economic factor, it is relevant. It is, you know, our events needs to be economically sustainable as well, but our impact on the environment cannot be left aside and must have a heavier weight on the decision-making process. So this is something that I have learned and we're able to internalize uh, more uh, on my thinking on the way of planning events, because all of us without, uh, without uh, a, a zero exception, we're all responsible for what the world is going to be like. So even when we bring it to our personal lives, we need to consider uh, the best practices and how is our carbon footprint going to be left aside? And because uh, only if we all take action, something will be able to be changed. If not, uh, this is going to be something that uh, a battle that we will never win. And uh, the, especially the environment will suffer more and more. So I think that was something that in 2020, I was able to internalize and I, I was able to put as one of my priorities for the future as something that I always try to defend and achieve in the forums that I'm able to participate and have a, have a say. Because then again, we have to think, I have a small kid, what world do I want him to live within uh, the, the next 20, 30 years? And same for little Anna. Yes, it actually, especially when, when you have children, it makes you think even more about it. Uh, because, I mean, at some point, they will be here in the world making decisions and, I mean, we won't be here anymore. So how our actions, I mean, big or small actions, big or small de decisions uh, influence them, I mean, in influence other people as well. Um, even now, some decisions, what we make as a parents for, for our children, I mean, when they are small, they have no say, and and then we make decisions for them. But some decisions really in, will influence their, their life in the long term, and uh, and it is sustainability as well. Uh, the way how we think, the way how we act, and uh, yeah, somehow before I when I thought about what sustainability, I always thought more about events, about more about. Um, reducing the waste and like more kind of more practical ways a bit and uh, but now when having uh, a child it really makes you re-evaluate re -evaluate even more uh, the legacy and the sustainability i think those two words go really hand in hand together um yeah so who is the next <laughs> yeah. I forgot to look at script. <laughs> talk and talk about sustainability and the children. <laughs> no, but actually, Ilva, you make a really good point on that, which is, and and just to touch on 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 something that Gus mentioned as well, which is that sustainability. So. The reason why the UN model also talks about the economy is because ultimately the changes that occur in our world our most vulnerable populations are the first to suffer from these changes and that's something that we should be very humbled by and that we should really keep at heart uh, speaking of which there are changes that and and again actually ilva going back to something that you mentioned earlier and that i also brought up with you about you know changes are changes are sometimes beyond our control and and you spoke about acceptance of of these changes and as as a big part of your learnings this year um could you share with us maybe about the hope aspect as we look to 2021 yeah what are the things you hope for yeah 
um, actually nobody knows what what to expect from 2021. I mean, to to, to expect changes again, to expect coming back to the lives we had before. What? We don't know. And that's uh, so, so sometimes a scary point and sometimes it's actually to accept that it is uh, in the, uh, the way how we live. And actually, I was uh, recently thinking, um, you know, at least in uh, from my side, um, my grandma, she, she lived when, when the World War was. My parents, their generation experienced the Soviet Union and fall of Soviet Union. And actually, our generation, we didn't have anything so such an extraordinary. So actually, this pandemic is something what 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 is so much what everyone will remember for for years. Uh, what our generation experiences, but but still, I don't know either I'm you know you are too positive. But I think I mean that we still can expect good things to happen. And even we want to accept it or not, we have to we have to accept that uh, to live in this new norm and to go around it. And I think for our kids, it will be normal. I mean, the new norm for them would be oh, it is the way how we live. True. Yes. <laughs> and and I think we will be like our parents. But when we were kids, we we had this and this. Let's <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I still hope, and I know it will be good at the end. I mean, yeah, in a different way. But I don't know. I choose. I choose to hope, and I choose to to stay positive, and I choose to hope in the future. I mean, for us, for Ignite, and for our, for our children. So I think, I that's think you're, yeah, year and for the rest of years. I think you're very right. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sure my son, he, he's three now. When COVID uh, finishes eventually and people stop wearing masks, my son is going to look and say, what's happening? Because <laughs> people are not wearing masks. <laughs> so sadly, in a sense, that became their uh, daily lives and their normal. So that's something that's definitely going, is going to mark. But I think as a message of, of, of hope i think humans in general i think uh, some great great uh, characteristics is definitely uh, adaptability and creativity so this is something that uh, we're not uh, by chance the, the race that is running this country we we uh, this world sorry and uh, definitely these two things are something that will always uh, flourish and guide our direction when we're going forward. So I think we have overcome other things in the past, like uh, you've mentioned, and this will happen again. Yeah, I think that's that's it. And uh, well, what do you think, Neil? You have adapted well, a lot. More of a, I'm, I'm, I'm more a practical person. So uh, I love how we have like we all of us mentioned about hope uh, but i like, like i said i think i'm more practical and, and something that i can control so from from my perspective in terms of hope in terms of making something more concrete because you know hope is a big thing of course hope is good um but action is important as well and if we don't take action and and means that that hope is just talk so for me touches more closely to me about hope is if what we can do in ignites what we can change through ignites through our igniters um what this COVID 19 has taught us is to 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 adapt and we can definitely see how organizing committees because i think that's very close to our hearts we all have worked in organizing committees we all know the impact that that organizes, organizing committees and the host country can make. So two of the points that that Ilva had brought up is sustainability and, and legacy. That's that's you know very very important to ignite, and and organizing committees or event organizers can see that actually preparing and planning from a virtual setting in advance 
can work very well. So why is there a need to spend more money on overhead costs when they can do things online? So I think that's something which is very practical when we open the when we the borders start opening when the vaccine is distributed to everyone that's something that that the world of sport and events need to need to consider thoroughly um to see how they can use the virtual world which we are already using this whole year to make it a very cost effective and and efficient way of working because right now one of the reasons we, we started Ignites is, is also because there is so much cost incurred from having very expensive consultants going and, and, and helping the organizing committee. Uh, but sometimes this, this is not sustainable because there is no concrete continuity with regards to that. So um, from a perspective of hope, I would really like to see that organizing committees, event organizers, really capitalize on what they have learned during this COVID-19. What they have actually, uh, they had to upskill themselves in terms of virtually. So, so that's for me the, the piece on hope that I would like to share. And I think Ming uh, would give you also a similar message um, because we all share the same message in terms of trying to make cost-effective and efficient ways of working. So, Ming, maybe we can go towards what your hopes are. Oh, goodness. I think, actually, all three of you have said everything there is to be said about hope. Uh, so I'll just reiterate one or two of your points, which is to have courage and to take action for change. We should not be talking about change with fear. That's not a good combination to have if you want your action to be a productive one. We can be concerned, we can anticipate problems, but if you come from a point of fear, then that then you've started from the wrong foundation. That's not the foundation you want to build your action for change and positive change on. And something that um, Neil mentioned about continuity, about legacy, I think being invested in each other, even if we are not in the same country, even if we are not from the same organizing committee, even if we are not in the same team or the same organization, being in, invested in each other's success, in the success of the movement, in the success of event organization, in the success of people is, is important and that for me is 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 the hope that i have i mean sp speaking of hope we have the blessing the privilege of being here today and actually being able to look forward to to plan for 2021 and talk about 2021 what a privilege to be here how amazing is that and in 2021 so we mentioned about personal education we talked about upskilling um ignites will be be furthering our educational efforts, as Neil said, with our um, Sport Event Management course Foundation Level 2 with UPM and our Ignites Academy. Uh, we're continuing our community building and development. We will also be continuing our online initiatives, more What Is series, more Ignites conversations, and I'm excited about this. Um, for 2021, we will be tackling multiple seasons there will be one for st sustainability. There will be one for broaching the very, very stormy waters of equality. And of course, we recognize that within one season, there is no way we are going to touch everything on equality, but it is worth talking about. It is absolutely important to talk about. It's important to shine a light on it. Uh, we will be also having a session a season on safeguarding and we will have a season for esports which i think is interesting in which we can actually expose and challenge the stereotypes and shine a light on the progress and forays into active esport what about uh, what about you Oliver? what other what other things would you like to mention about ignites in 2021 I'm really excited uh, about our Ignite Summit. It, it actually has been one of the 
uh, one of the not first but things that we have been spoken from the from the beginning that one day we would like to meet you know with all our igniters like as a big family somewhere on i don't know what is the bora bora or, i don't know you know too so expensive uh, uh, malaysia is very cheap company I'm a lady first, yeah, one guy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so uh, we all can meet we, really as a family and can um, speak about topics uh, that are relevant for us, what are important for us. And as we, we can't do it now, so we, we will organize it online. And we have already announced a date. It's 5th and the 6th of February. And uh, we we hope to, to meet there and to see uh, all our igniters and partners and friends and uh, there we will address we will share what we have done this uh, this year what what uh, the future holds and we will get to know each other and then we have some other really good speakers in uh, in in the list what we will announce a bit later but i'm really excited so edward everyone who's listening please remember 5th and 6th of february neil and what is what what do you expect for ignite for this year and next year well our partnerships are going strong so right now we have three partnerships we have we steam we have we track and we have quantum consultancy um and even right now, we are working very, very closely with WIS team, uh, with one of the projects that we have is the Boxing Rock to Tokyo, which will start soon. Uh, and then we also hope to be, to be very closely um, linked in some projects with uh, WeTrack as well, providing the operators of the system on, on their events. So that's something that I'm looking forward to, uh, apart from the summit, apart from the education piece that we have. Uh, there's so much things in 2021. I think we are going to be so busy, right, Bruce? I hope so, especially when events do come back live and we can engage and go put our hands dirty again and go into action. But for, from my side, I'm very excited in 2021 about our safeguarding initiative. Uh, when you think about our mission and vision on how we can support the development of the sports world and the sports events world, we cannot let safeguarding aside. That's something that also is part of the responsibility of events organizers and sports organizations in general. And, but that's still a nation that is so important, but still giving baby steps. And I think Ignite can help support organizations and improve in that. And, and help create the, the necessary awareness of how we all need to be part of this in order to create a better sports for all, especially for our children and the next generations that we will be able to enjoy sports to the fullest and uh, extinct possibilities of sport becoming something traumatic and bad for uh, bad experiences for their lives. But something that generates an environment that they can enjoy to the most and really live the Olympic values uh, that the sport has the capacity to, to transmit and, and affect their lives positively. So that's why I'm very excited about um, our uh, project on safeguarding. Hopefully we can put this forward and help this movement a little bit. I think that um, I think there there are three elements that we the four of us in Ignite um, feel very strongly for when events start opening up. Uh, it's sustainability, legacy, and safe sport. And these are the three things that Ignite is very passionate about for for events moving forward. Yeah, yeah, and from there I pass it out to to Ming. Yeah, about I think her we've talked a ton. Yeah. Uh, yes. And we've addressed a lot, but it's still not everything. And, and, and it will take the whole of 2021 to, to take all of these actions and to speak more, to discuss more, to dialogue more, to learn and to grow more together. So we've said this several ways now through this conversation. Um, Ignite is its people. We are our passion. We are our intention. We are our hopes, our dreams, our sharings. And we as Ignite, we are committed to this family. 
to all of you and all that you are and all that you bring. We are focused on serving our igniters, on lifting each other up, on empowering each other, on challenging each other and celebrating each other. To our igniters, to our partners, to our dear friends, you may remember one of our very first emails that we sent out to you. It was a call to action. We are committed to taking action to make the change that we believed in, that we have always hoped for. And that we often commiserated with each other over during games time or during difficult events. So this is our commitment to you. Um, come 2021, I hope that we'll see each other again in person. Uh, thank you for staying with us today, everyone. Thank you for your engagement, for your encouragement, uh, for reaching out to us and for being with us. Um, we wish you a very, very blessed end of year and a wonderful new year. For those of you celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. And for those of you celebrating happy, uh, happy holidays, uh, see you in the new year. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank Ciao. you. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.